Oh, oh we're here. It works. I love it. Oh. <laughs> hey, we've gone, we've we've gone and done it. Uh, apart from the the dodgy uh, the dodgy background, but anyway, yeah. Okay, it's not a dodgy. Okay, dogs. Oh, dogs. oh that's that's dogs. so cool. Yeah, very good. Okay, okay. Uh, this is a dog that has a home. But there's many that don't give. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> right, we're on. Okay, should we talk about internal links, then, Grant? I don't know. Maybe Anton wants to introduce oh, him. Oh, no. Let's do Anton first. I can see him. I can see him going, oh, my God, we're not doing it right. Okay, Anton, off you go. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Carol. Thanks, Dixon, for being with us and for not losing your microphone, not uh, losing your voice. Everything is fine. Okay, losing your background, but never, never mind. We'll, we'll be talking about internal links uh, today. And uh, thank you for in links. In links were uh, one of our sponsors. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, it's all yours, uh, Grant Simmons and Dixon Jones. All right. So, so Dixon and I are not known for being normal. And by that, I mean rational. Okay, you might be. Uh, so we thought we'd do a little far side chat about this because uh, Dixon has been around a long time and I'm just old. And so uh, we thought we'd talk a little bit about internal links based on your massive experience, Dixon. And well, yeah, and and since it's uh, it's oh. uh, nearly nearly well, it's it's half past seven in the evening here, and I don't work on Fridays, so you know this is oh, it's getting hidden by the far side chat, which is far side, which is great. But there we go. Yeah, yeah. I have a cup. I have a cup of tea. I'm in Virginia. Anyway, so I want to I want to talk to you, Dixon. Now, obviously, we're going to go back and forth a little bit, but I, I would like to ask, based on your experience, not just the in links, but a majestic, and other we're talking about internal links. Mm. What, what is what is the biggest challenge you see now when you look at sites either through you know the inlets dashboard or, or just looking at very what is the challenge you see that these lovely people out there can basically fix well there's there's a number of things uh i, I mean since you since you mentioned uh, my majestic days i think one of the things that is interesting about the the maths of the old page rank algorithm is um is that page rank doesn't doesn't distinguish in the original algorithm between an external link and an internal link, and all the maths of internal links applies to to page rank and and uh, uh, and although um, Majestic concentrates on showing you all the external links, the maths is also done on or, or internally as well, so it does all the calculations on that. And I think that um, people forget that they can manipulate, say, the page rank and nowadays the topical page rank of any particular page particularly their important pages their seo pages if really effectively with internal links even if the pillar page the the one you're hoping to rank on the search engines doesn't have any external links going to that page that doesn't stop you from giving it power through your own website but i think that uh, people have a problem seeing their internal link structure for a start most tools don't have it doing an internal links audit uh, particularly at a site-wide level uh, we can maybe talk about some of the tools and things that are out there for internal link audits and i think they're weak at the moment uh, and hopefully hopefully that's something we can fix but i think that um that these are the things it's just, people are just blind people they don't have the information to say ah oh, right we've got this one page that needs to be you know the authority page for this topic over here and this one is over here uh, which is the, the authority for this page but they never told anybody else in the organization so everybody else is writing content that's overlapping with that and there's no coordinated effort and even if there is a coordinated effort it's done uh it's done piecemeal generally uh and i think that that is the major problem it's it's marshalling your resources into a into a single focus right. does that make sense or have i already got right. no no right I think it makes sense. I probably can condense that a little bit because I haven't had wine yet. Probably best, mate. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. So, so what we're essentially saying is that there's a lot of writers who are told add a couple of internal links to your blog post, and just maybe if you can find a page that that is relevant, you link to it. And what I see is lots of people linking blog post to blog post, and that's not necessarily pulling your if you want to use your link juice and your page rank to the right places, you talked about a target page or an SEO page or a landing page, a, a pillar page. There's so many different words, you know, hub spoke, whatever. So yeah. what do you mean by that? Because 
Yeah, yeah we, we're going to create links. Where we're going to create links to why and what's important. Yeah, so I think I think the thing, the process that you, you should go with, regardless of whether you use technologies or not to do it, is you've got to start with your business, right? So you know, if you're an insurance company, please don't try and optimize for you know for a, a mortgage. You know, that's not that's not the right you know attitude. You've got to know what your business is, um, and then you've got to. Uh, work out the main business areas within that function, that, that business. Um, and and you need to keep on focusing on them because, yes, you can write content that gets 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 ranking for the, to, for the long tail. You don't need necessarily internal linking for any of that. But the, the stuff that's going to make you money, usually, even for a site with millions of pages, is probably, well, hundreds of thousands of pages, uh, is, is probably in the dozens or, you know, the money pages are, are in the dozens or, or hundreds, depending on, on the size of your website. For most businesses, you know, especially smaller businesses with, say, less than 20 people in them, well, they can't be more than about 10 different things that they do. If they do solar panels, they do solar panels. They probably don't do windmills, you know. Uh, and, uh, and, it's, you know and, and I think that um, uh, you have to focus on those ideas. And then when one particular idea gets gets too big, you have a page that's focused on that, and as the as the content on your site grows, then you may split that off into into smaller ideas. But I don't think you should um, jump in uh, and uh, just set every page up with a target. You kind of need to focus on on what's going to make the money for you. So, so money pages definitely yeah. targets number yeah. one. Number two is and, and there's some great comments going back and forth. Oh, you pick them up. So I'm not reading no fast enough. So, no, when you know. we talk about this, we are talking about four search engines, but by extension, having you know links to the relevant money pages yeah. is great for business and it's great for users too. Because ultimately, they have uh, you know some kind of needs met they need to do. So, uh, hopefully, that aligns with your business needs as well. So, sending people down a funnel with internal links. It's just as important as sending search engines down proper routes for internal links, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, but let me let me ask a question back to you because you uh, have dealt with a lot of big sites as a kind of like in-house kind of guy as well. And as you know, and I, I'm a little businessman. I'm a tiny little businessman. You know, oh, even yeah. when I was, you know, majestic. All we really cared about is the phrase, you know, external links or whatever. You know, uh, uh, link intelligence, these kind of things. So, um, so, so uh, I think. You've dealt with a lot more big websites, and I kind of just made a, a sweeping statement that smaller websites, you know, you kind of only have 10 things you want to rank for. But uh, I don't know if you can talk about some of the big sites you have worked on in the past, but, you know, uh, was, when, when you were going for those, did you have, a, you know, a dozens of headline terms or did you have hundreds of headline terms? It's a really good question. And, and remember, things have changed whereby, you know, a page used to be mostly keyword targeted. Now we're talking about topics and obviously relevance around entities and relevance around that, that topic ontology that we just talked about. Um, so, you know, homes.com, 120 million pages. You know, you're trying to show up for homes for sale in uh, Fox Sports or work time. You know, you're trying to show up for uh, football scores. Um, you know, when you're working with Walmart and you're trying to actually show up for categories and subcategories, the main thing is, and what we found generally, there was lots of internal links that were going to many pages that weren't subcategories or categories, mm. whereby, to your point originally, you know, there is no cohesive strategy around it. So definitely we start with what are the money pages, what are the sub-money pages? We want to say pounds and pennies, all right? It all adds up. Um, and, and then we would make sure that there was internal link that was relevant, related, and definitely not site-wide. And so from that standpoint, it was contextual, right. internal links that make sense. So yeah. a city, nearby cities. Yeah. Uh, a city targeting homes would be homes for sale, maybe homes for rent, or homes for sale, maybe condos for sale. So we'd look at that and we would have different internal links based on what level we were at. So always trying to do that where we're looking at relevant, related context and everything else. but. That's big sites. Mm. What, what the thought on small sites? If it's less than twenty pages, you can't really screw up too much. I think the 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 thing with with well, whether it's big or small, 
I think that the interesting thing about the methodology you just said is that there was a lot of probably a lot of manual thinking about that kind of issue. And the tools that um, have been traditionally out there for uh, auditing internal linking, uh, I, I, saw, I saw one um, talking about how you can use Screaming Frog. I think it's Will Reynolds or someone did, did, did one recently on, you know, how do you use Screaming Frog for um, uh, internal link auditing? Um, and, I, and I kind of played with it and I thought, you yeah, know, okay, because obviously we're, we're, we're coming out with internal link auditing and, uh, and it's kind of like, oh, okay, right, maybe we're just trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and so I went and looked at, and, 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 and the thing is, most of those tools, you get to say, right, okay, here's my target page. I want to have a look at all the link opportunities for keyword, enter keyword here. And you put a keyword in, it runs through all the other websites and find, for all web pages and finds where those potential links are. And there's two, two fundamental problems with that. Is that the first is that uh, you, you are doing it one page at a time um, and you're also doing it exact match at a time. And I think both of those are a real, a real issue that I've not seen the industry have a, 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 a quick, a quick, quick answer to, given that we all have businesses that want to have the 10 category pages ranking usually and that sort of thing, you know, um, surely you would have thought that we we should already have this optimization system, the systems in place to, to do that uh, and know where the gaps are and know where there's broken links and know these kind of things. And, and the systems don't. So we're going in and saying, right, we're going to audit your internal links. And that's either done manually which is time consuming and and in the tests and the stuff that we 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 that we're coming out with i hope um uh, the one the one site i'm coming out with we've only uh, someone has tried to do the link, internal linking manually um and they did exactly what you said at the start you've said the the re, the writers have been told every time they write something to then go and have a look at what's on the site and put in internal links on the page so that when it goes live it's already got the link links and off it goes 11 percent of the link opportunities were discovered that way um so that means that 89 percent of the example that we used which is only a 100 page website you know they'd missed these opportunities and i've had a look at, it, at the first stuff it's all in it's it's not out yet so uh, but but there's there's a huge gap in those uh, in those um so, uh, so, link opportunities so what what once again not condensing it down too much but using targets is not just about sending keyword anchor text to a page and, Absolutely and, not. Uh, well, I know it is if you use a uh, if you sort of uh, so Link Whisper, for example, is yeah. a great free tool. It'll plug in WordPress plugin. It'll give you exact match anchor text, or, um, and 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 it'll be there, and you program it, and you'll do all the links and put it all into the system. Don't need to pay. I don't think very much anyway. Uh, but it's not really doing any kind of uh, ontology. Uh, and we've talked. Way sorry. Way. Um, uh, it's not doing any kind of ontology. Uh, or, or understanding of synonyms and that sort of thing. And, and that can be really problematic if it's not trying to understand synonyms because it means all the links are exact match. It means that um, the links have not been understood in context. They are literally just putting the links in, you know, e even if they're, they're not appropriate. There's probably no checking of any of those links. So I think that you need to understand synonyms or some, something a human or a machine needs to understand synonyms. It needs to un un understand contexts. And it needs to understand how salient that con that content is on the page as well. So um, Google did a, a, a thing on salience, entity salience, in 2014, I think. Um, there's a, a Google paper on, on entity salience. And I think that that's a, an interesting paper because you look through a, a page of um, content and it tries to say which ones are salient topics and which ones are not relevant to the particular context they're being used. You don't necessarily need to link absolutely everything to to everything. You need to have some kind of meaning in there. And that is the challenge where uh, a lot of writers are not SEO people and they're given very basic instructions. And the idea of burying internal anchor text is something we always looked at when we were doing link building from the outside in. Yeah. We yeah. don't really think of it from the inside out. Yeah, and doing it from the inside, inside in. So inside, inside in. Yeah, the only, yeah, the only way the SEO does it is in the menu structure, which, okay, that's fine, but that's a different type of link. And a menu structure link doesn't have context because it doesn't have any any words around it to uh, to explain to the user or, or to the reader or to, to Google, for that matter, as to what that context is. So you need it in the, in the text. 
Um, yeah, uh, well, I, I think it's a really good point. So a lot of people, when they're running their, uh, their link audits with Screaming Frog or Sitebulb or some of these other great tools, they're, they're basically getting an idea of internal links totally. And they're seeing anchor text that is 90% of one kind because that's the navigational elements within the site. They're not looking at that segment of contextual links and saying, okay, that contextual anchor text, is it varied? Is it giving additional? What are the words around that as well mm -hmm. that are giving additional context? And, and you and I were talking about that, you know, context window, that the idea of now, you know, gentry of AI is looking at more and more of a piece of copy to understand what an actual link is about. Yeah. So, yeah, so Google had all that... Um stuff some years ago on passage indexing uh, and uh, uh, and then Bert was all about understanding queries backwards forwards and sideways and uh, and and all these things are starting to show that chunking is a is a big part of uh, of, of 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 it all um by the way there's a there's an interesting question i think it was an interesting question from jerry it could be a sarcastic question i don't know but i don't know if you can bring that question up again i thought it, i thought it looked interesting but you know it, it may it may not be, uh, but uh, something about <laughs> derivatives and things. Uh, and and what I thought the question was saying was, well, let's talk about derivatives of a term. So basically, you go down from a term, you've got a generic um, term, uh, and then you move move down. I can't seem to find the question now. So uh, so uh, if, if if it comes up, then it comes up. But uh, okay, there we go. Let's talk derivatives and anchor uh, for anchor text. If you look at the cluster terms ranking similarly. Uh, thought on using internal link actors varied in that. Okay, yeah. So basically, it wasn't. It was sorry. It wasn't Jerry. It was Stefan. So okay. So uh, so my our take on it, uh, rightly or wrongly, is that firstly, uh, who's Jerry? Jerry White. He's uh, he's um, he's somebody who, who rarely. It was. It was. Yeah. It, it was him. Yeah. I got the wrong one. Anyway. So uh, so so uh, the first thing to do really is you can't do this properly unless either you're a human and you can read the content and you understand the difference between a Mustang, which is a car, a Mustang that is a plane and a Mustang that's a horse. Uh, if you're a human, you get that intuitively. And you or may also know that Mustang and horse are similar things. And really, you know, you could you could interchange those words in a particular context on a site. And Mustang and car, you could interchange those words on a different site, uh, but never the twain should meet. So A, you don't want to link a Mustang car to a Mustang horse web page. Um, and, and, and you also, at the same time, need to understand that a Mustang and a horse, in the context of where you are, is the same thing. So if, you if you're if you doing it uh, as a human, you can do it. If you're doing it as a machine, you need to have um, a natural language processing uh, algorithm. Google's got one. Text Razor is a great one. Obviously, Inglinx is a good one. Uh, and then uh, IBM Watson also. All of those are APIs that will allow you to, uh, to to return entities on a page, and you can see the underlying entity of those. But they can be a different word. The words that we see are just labels. And the example I use um, often is um, the Eiffel Tower, the Tour Eiffel, um, and uh, a big metal um, building in Paris. Um, and there's some things in the in a, in, a, in a Azerbaijan alphabet. They all mean the same thing. And they're just labels for the same object. And it doesn't matter whether you see the Wikipedia page in English, French, German, whatever. It's the same object. There's only one proper Eiffel Tower. Um, and what you call it is just something that changes with human beings changing language over time. Um, but the, the concept is, 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 uh, is static. But the, so, the NLP needs to understand the concept. Oh, or at least have so, a record for it. Uh, Sorry, you literally wrote the book on entity SEO, all right? So I can, <laughs> I can bring that in. You literally wrote that book. Um, so it's, it's, it's only 72 pages. I, I, I wasn't okay. very bright. You literally <laughs> skimmed through that book, everyone. You, probably people have read it while they're on this actual chat. So um, the, the idea of entities, what you just said, you know, something that's unique and catalogued and understood by NLP search search engines, things like that, you know, Um it's really key, and it's key to how we're looking at things. And I think to Stefan's point, we're looking at uh, you know entities and associations around the entities, kind of entity attributes, and we're looking at you know synonyms, as, as you said. But we're really trying to get that full, complete picture. So there's total disambiguation, 
in what a page is about. Yeah. Now, yeah. How, how do we do that? And how can people do that if they're not doing in links? Uh, so, you, I mean, you can go through and use the old sort of skyscraper technique of, uh, of going and having a look at all the uh, of all the contents and writing down the individual things. But I think you have to you, you just can't do it at scale without a natural language algorithm, uh, processing algorithm. And fortunately, I mean, we're not the only one out there, but, you know, uh, but I think you have to use something. I know you could probably use a Python script as well to sit there and say, right, tell me all the things that this is uh, this is about on the on the page. Uh, so there's probably plenty of things to to uh, uh, to to uh, define a page into its underlying topics. Um, the, that doesn't help you. Uh, necessarily to do all of your internal linking because remember your internal linking structure and strategy should start with the pillar pages going back to where we started uh, and you need to say right these are the pillar pages now I need to run this algorithm over all of the other content to see where I've got um, content that needs to link through and I don't want to look at it just by the exact match keywords I want to look at it by the concept. If I've got to put it this way, if I've got a page about the Eiffel Tower, and then I've got a page in uh, in uh, a completely different language that mentions the Eiffel Tower, but I don't have an English page on the Eiffel Tower, do you link through to the English page on the Eiffel Tower? I would say you do, um, because you, you that's where your authority is for the concept of the Eiffel Tower. Uh, well, so so I, I'll I'll go back again. So we've talked about the target page. Are you saying I didn't answer the question? No, no, you answered the question. It was unbelievably perfect. In fact, it's probably the most perfect answer I've ever heard in my fifteen years of SEO. But but uh, ladies and gentlemen, I pay him a retainer for saying this Thank stuff. You. That's right. Um, <laughs> no, so so we have our target page, and we're talking about that as an entity, a disambiguated entity page. So it's not like we're slicing a grape. And trying to get something down, so blah, blah, blah. because those days are, are, are mostly gone. Where unless there's yeah. a distinct different intent, you're going to yeah. have a main page. And so once we've defined that entity, that main thing, we we then know based on NLP what kind of anchor text and what kind of variation we should use to get back to that page. That's right. And that's yeah, there, and, the and that slicing and slicing and slicing uh, issue is a real thing for people to get their heads around. There's so many websites that, or so many you know, users of InLink to come in and they just say, you don't have the entities. Well, oh, my, my, my pages, you don't have entities for my, for my stuff. And you look at it and it's like where they've got a gray screwdriver, a blue screwdriver, an orange screwdriver, and, you know, and then a Phillips screwdriver. And, you know, and, and, and one or two of these things are entities and then they've got 300 other um, products that are the same entity, just a different color. Now, at that point, um, they have to they have to start to understand the idea of, of mapping, and 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 I, I kind of try and explain that this way. I'll say, right, okay, I'm going to use the Eiffel Tower. You're trying to walk to the Eiffel Tower from uh, from Central, Grand Central Station or wherever or where, whatever from from Paris, but, but Gare du Nord, uh, and uh, you're trying trying to get there, and you've got a map. So. Uh, God, no, it's windy. Let's get a drink. The old men are here. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, so so you're trying to get there and you know the direction to travel, but it doesn't matter whether you use Google Maps or Apple Maps, you're still going to get there. The point is that um, as long as uh, a, 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 you know our knowledge graph is genuinely trying to be correct and Google's knowledge graph is trying to be correct and um, any other knowledge graph is trying to map the world, of, of in this case concepts um, in a, in a way that we 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 all genuinely believe is correct. You will get to where you want to go. You will tell a search engine where you want to go. You will tell the users where they want to go. And and the internal linking is is really playing to that to that strength. Um, and I don't know if I've no no no. Answered. So what what we're what we're also saying then is we're creating our own knowledge graph in our site through yeah. the correct internal linking strategy. Yeah, and it's yeah. Really hard when you have 20 people involved in that to make sure you're all on the same page, literally and figuratively, yeah? It, 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 yeah, that is. And I think that, I rem you know, going back 25 years, I remember when the BBC was brilliant at SEO and there was a young kid and he was 16. He's unfortunately, he's, 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 he's 
died now, but he was the SEO for the BBC for in, the, in my early years in 1999, 2001, 2002. And this guy got them, got it right. And basically, they were, every time new content was coming out, they were sitting there and putting internal links to the major sections on the website and stuff. And the internal link was brilliant. And the BBC dominated um, news search at the time. Uh, and uh, an absolutely uh, um, brilliant st strategy, given that it was, you know, 20, 25 years ago. Uh, but unfortunately, it just didn't didn't scale ultimately over time. You know, something something got forgotten. The processes weren't in place. There was no technology to take over from that. So the internal linking reduces the cannibalization. Uh, it allows allows your blog content to talk about multiple things, and uh, and, and still those internal links can break that cannibalization down. So if you've got a, 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 a DIY uh, site, I know we're running, going to run out of time this thing. Um, if, we, uh, if, if we've got a DIY site um, that talks about screwdrivers, talks about drills, and talks about paint, uh, and then you write an article on uh, how to change your front door, then it's going to talk about a screwdriver, and it's going to talk about drills, and it's going to talk about paint. It doesn't mean you don't talk about changing the front door. It means that that can then support the pillar stuff of selling screwdrivers, selling paint, and selling, you know, drills. Yeah, don't you don't have that cannibalizing in your blog categories. That's always a challenge. Hey, yeah. I, I want to just light one fire before we have to go, I guess, which is, all right, you just talked about a blog article, um, having links to different tools and stuff. All yep. right, the question I, I got, I was just at Digital Summit this last week, it was how many links should you have on a page? Uh, can you have too many links on a page? Dixon, oh, okay. I've, done, I've done the calculations. 13.6. Okay, your... perfect. Yeah. perfect. Yeah, okay. there you go. Because last week it was 14.3. Yeah, so but, the, you know, week... but that's it. That's, you know, it's just the maths. And so, you know, you just got to do the do, to update the maths every day. That's what it is. Isn't it? I'll just use this last section to say uh, that, you know, if anyone hasn't used in links, then where are you? There's a free version, so it's not that difficult. Uh, and uh, I'm saying that because I'm a sponsor and I'm allowed to. But uh, Grant, thanks very much for for, uh, for, for giving me the uh, the the um, lining up the questions. Uh, it's uh, that's a lot uh, of yeah. fun. <laughs> thank, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. And, and look, uh, oh, I, well, I, look, sorry, you know, I make you do yeah. it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've known Anton for a long time, and uh, yeah. he's doing a lot of good here. And so please keep going. Let's see if we can keep going. Uh, internal links, uh, Dixon really did write the book on this. He is a master. Uh, read his book or read some of the articles on in links. Some really good resources to learn about internal linking, entities, and everything else. It is all connected. We are just one big graph. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you. Jerry, right. the guy the guy was Martin. I can't remember his surname. Uh, and I think he died in a plane accident. So. Ah. Well, way to finish on a high note. Dick. Sorry, so, mate. No, no, no. Sorry. All right. Well, Whoops. Uh, <laughs> everyone. it's great to see some nice faces, uh, nice names. Uh, we'll see you on the flip side. And thank you, Alyssa. Is, is there any other questions, by the way? Is there anything else? No, we've got to go, Grant. We've got to grow. Just uh, okay, let, let me get us out. Let's get us out. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.